guys, welcome to my channel. It's Labor Day today and we're doing something a bit different. A lot of times on Labor Day we will um, cook out on the grill or smoke meat, ribs or whatever. And today we're, Brent is running the smoker. He's out starting the fire and getting everything ready. But we're gonna cook a meatloaf in our smoker. I've never done that before and so we'll see. Brent wanted to do that. He thinks that he thinks that will be really good. And he's probably right. But I don't like when I get used to doing things a certain way, that's the way I like to do it. So I'm not big on change. I don't like it outside of my box, so to speak. So when I make a meatloaf, I like to have my meatloaf in my oven and just, you know. But this will be fun. This is gonna be something different. And yeah, so I wanted to bring you all along and show you a different way to cook because in the the mindset of prepping and all of the what if what ifs and we've talked about the different ways to cook our food prepare our food i have an electric stove electric oven so if the power was out for whatever reason um i would need a different way to cook so and i have different i have different ways of cooking we have um a smoker we have a grill we have a camp stove um things like that. So, but today we're going to learn how to fix meatloaf in a different way. So I thought I would share my recipe with you all and then Brent will come in when the fire's ready um, and he'll put it, put it on the smoker. I'm going to turn the camera down and let you all watch how I put my meatloaf together. All right. So first of all is of course the meat. I think we have about two to two and a half pounds of ground beef here. Part of it's frozen here. That will make my hands hurt. All right, so here we go. Just breaking it up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, now to my meat, I'm gonna add about half of a medium onion that I've chopped very fine. Now, this is something according to your own taste preference. If you like a lot of onion, by all means, put a lot of onion in. Some people like to put green pepper in. I just put onion in my meatloaf. So here's our onion. Then I will pop in two eggs. I don't know how much to tell you. I just give it a good shake like this. Same with pepper. I just, you know, when I was a, a young wife and mother, just learning to cook, I would, you know, talk to my mom or my grandma or whoever about, oh, how do you make that? How much of this do you put in? What's your recipe? And I was always so frustrated when they would say, well, I don't know, I just put some in. Now I understand where they were coming from. You just put some in. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze in ketchup, probably about a half a cup. And I tell you what, I'm missing an ingredient. I like to put about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce in my meatloaf as well, but I don't have any today, so that's okay. Then to this, I'm gonna add probably about three fourths a cup of breadcrumbs, but I'm not sure. I just shake them and then I can tell when I mix it all up if I need more or less. Let me put the lid on that. All right. I go in with my hands and just squish it all up. That's the best way for me to be able to mix everything and kind of tell if I need more of something. I can tell right away I think I'm gonna need more breadcrumbs. But I'll mix it all up real good and then I'll make, make up my mind on that. Okay. Ooh. 
Oh, that cold hamburger is making my hand hurt. let my other hand thaw out for a little while. <laughs> Burr. <clears throat> now this is a lot of meatloaf for us. There's, there's only three of us today, but we love meatloaf sandwiches, like cold meatloaf sandwiches. And Brent will wanna take some dinner plates this week. We'll dip him up some, some dinner plates with the leftover meatloaf and vegetables. So it will, it will all go to good use, I'm sure. All right, I think I'm not gonna add any more breadcrumbs. The longer I mixed, the more it, it is holding together better. So yeah, I think that's our meatloaf. So I'm gonna get my pan here. I'm using a disposable aluminum pan for this meatloaf to sit in the smoker today so it doesn't kind of damage my my good pans. All right, so I'm gonna mold this into a loaf shape. Kind of, sort of. have a meatloaf. Now closer to time, right before it's done, I will mix up brown sugar, ketchup, and a little bit of mustard, and that will be my, I'll, I'll top it, I'll, you know, spread that on the top. And now I'm going to peel my potatoes and carrots and get those chopped up and in here, and I'll let you all watch me do that. Okay, so we have our vegetables peeled and washed. And we'll go back and get our meatloaf now. Actually, we will continue chopping, I guess. I have an onion, I have the other half of the onion. I'm just gonna put it on top of these vegetables as they cook. And I'm gonna um, try to decide how big to make my potatoes. Probably about so I just drop them in beside the meatloaf along the edges there There's our meatloaf, potatoes, carrots, and an onion. I'm gonna just lightly salt just the vegetables. And a little bit of pepper. Okay, when Brent gets the fire ready, we'll go outside and check out what he's doing. There's the smoker. There's our cook, Mr. Brent. So what are we doing here? I'm just gonna set it on here on the far end, away from the direct um, heat from the firebox. 
Okay. Uh, we're going to let it go a short time uncovered uh, and we'll cover it with foil. Uh, want to let it infuse with some of the uh, hickory uh, smoke and then we'll cover it for a while so that the vegetables get done without uh, turning dark. Uh, and then after they've started to cook, uh, then we'll take the foil back off for the last part of the cooking and uh, in the last few minutes then we'll add the glaze. So you're going to try for a temperature of 350 mm -hmm. and tell tell our YouTube friends what kind of wood that you use because that might be something they'd be interested to know. What kind of wood do you like? I'm a big fan of hickory. Um, you, you get a good uh, flavor with hickory and um, it's sort of a strong distinct taste but also has a bit of a sweet taste to it mm -hmm. and if I'm if I'm cooking a a pork butt or ribs something that I might have to cook for a long time this is only going to cook for an hour to an hour and a half if, if I'm cooking something that's going to be an all-day smoke like with a pork butt or even ribs that are going to cook for several hours uh, I like to add some apple wood apple mm-hmm mm -hmm. It smells really good. All right, there goes the meatloaf. It's a beautiful day here today. The locusts have made so much noise this summer though. Okay. Hey guys, Brent is gonna take the temperature of his meatloaf. I have mixed up a glaze of ketchup with just a tad of mustard and brown sugar. Let's take a peek. Ooh. Looks pretty. The internal temperature should be about 160 or above. It should be at least 160 uh, for it to be thoroughly done. Um, so it should take you about an hour and a half with it's your- 164.6. It'll, it'll climb even a little more. Yeah. So we cooked it a little longer, but we're, we're kind of type, we like our meat very well done. It'll probably take you about an hour and a half or so to get it to 160. Uh, we went a little longer. We started out with the vegetables covered, uh, and then I uncovered them uh, so that it could get the, the smoke flavor from the hickory wood. So it's ready to glaze, let that caramelize, and then we'll red, let it rest for just a few minutes, and then we're going to be ready to eat. And I think this is going to be pretty good. Looking forward smells to it. really good. You want to go ahead and glaze it for me? I like to put Worcestershire sauce in my glaze, but I, I'm out today, so we're making do with what we have. It smells so good, you guys. And you were kind of a doubter, weren't you? Well, I just don't like to get out of my box. I don't like to try new things. That's why we make such a great couple. You yank me out of my box every once in a while and make me try new things. <laughs> Your ideas are usually very good, and that smells wonderful. Temperature's perfect here today. Oh, look who else smells the meatloaf. Hey, Shadow. Kitty, kitty. She's such a pretty kitty. Very well behaved. She's made friends with all of us. Um, we're going to let that glaze go for just a, just a five, ten minutes. Okay. Let it, uh, caramelize slightly. And then we'll take it up and let it rest for ten or fifteen minutes. And then we will eat. Okay, that sounds good. It smells really good. Okay, and here we are with Mr. Brent, our taste tester. I hope this is as good as I <laughs> think it will it be. It smells really good. Is it super good? Try a potato or a carrot. I, I want like to know what do the vegetables taste. Very 
Very good. Very good. All right, guys. So there's our meatloaf, potatoes, and carrots. Have a great day and a good week, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.